Welcome, brothers and sisters. My name is Eros and I am the Doll Maker. Today we will discuss about the festivity of Mabon on a more intermediate level. So, as always, we want to take into consideration some additional correspondences. In this occasion, I have thought to uh, explain these additional correspondences using four totemic animal perfect for this season. The first one is the owl, representing wisdom, the wisdom we are seeking for. But the owl is also an animal that can see into the darkness and that looks straightforward into the night, representing the darkness we want and need to explore in this descent into darkness. The next tribal, the next totemic animal is the stag. Now, the stag is an animal that walks seasonal paths, reminding us to always walk the cycle of the wheel of the year. And of course, the cycle that we can find in our lives, the, the many cycles that we can find in our lives. But we also need to remember that the stag is a tribal animal, reminding us to always walk the path of our tradition, the tradition we study in our magical art. And of course, to also walk the path that has been walked from our ancestors, reminding us to always walk also the tradition of our family in a certain sense, either the, your family or the family you have chosen. Then the stag is also an animal that shed his handlers. So the, it is reminding us to always refine our tradition, to refine our technique, to refine our magical weapons, following tradition and renewing with our intuition. The next amazing totemic animal that we have chosen is the salmon. The salmon is an animal that always transforms himself during the cycle of his life. So, the salmon reminds us to always be ready for the change. Then, the salmon is also an animal that fights against the current to reach his nesting place. This is a metaphor to be ready to fight in dark times and through harsh conditions to transform our life, metaphorically to change our life. And the last totemic animal is the crow. The crow is a messenger of death. And as we know, death from the tarot, from the major arcanas, is um, mainly a metaphor for the transformation of ourselves and our life. Plus, the crow is also um, an animal that eats carcasses. So it's an animal that mm, exemplifies purification of our life, using the old to generate new life, even using death to generate new life. And that, as we said, is a metaphor of deep transformation. Starting from these animals, that of course we will be able to 
meditate into, to meditate into the behavior. We understand that this festivity, this season, is suggesting us to use this time for healing from trauma and fear through this deep transformation. If you want exploring darkness to find balance, we want to have equal portions of darkness and light within us to find this balance. Knowing our darker side allows us to balance it with our inner light. Also, of course, we are talking in this festivity about healing and transformation, as we say. Beside protection and purification, operation that we should do at this time, we, in our tradition at least, we usually work with puppets or gay dolls that are still prevalent, especially here in Italy. I don't know elsewhere, of course. And as we know from the uh, Vaudon tradition, when we use puppets, it means that we need to be extremely specific on the, mm, the zone of our target that we usually want to heal. Because, of course, if we simply need to strike or destroy, a candle will be more than necessary. So, when we tend to use idols or puppets of any sort, however you want to call them, we are usually trying to heal a specific zone, a specific part of ourselves. Of course, if you can't already, if you don't know already how to use puppets, you may use um, journaling, as we've explained before, to attack specific things that you want to heal inside yourself. Also, remember this is not only a time to heal, but also the great harvest, the cornucopia, an amazing time, the, the last harvest, if you want. So it's also really, really traditional to work with food in our tradition, of course. So giving food offerings or trying kitchen magic, if you're not already into kitchen magic, Another thing that we do in our tradition, as we said, I believe in the previous video, is to work with garlands, either as an offering, as a spell, or even simply as a decoration. And if you are very proficient in, with woodworking or metalworking, like my brother Chris, you may also want to try even a very, very simple uh, jewelry making. So, e even very simple project, of course. In this um, list of alternative spells, we also find in our tradition so, uh, a little bit of apple magic, but apple spells uh, quite a lot, so we may need a completely different video to explain them. If you already know them, remind that in this season they are extremely typical. Also, as in any quarter of the year, please remember that divination here is maybe extremely important, because we can do the divination for the last quarter of the year and as always in the intermediate level i quote the bone fire if you prefer a feast especially here that we are heading toward the cold season we may want to prepare a feast 
for our covenant, for our family, for uh, ourselves, together with a bonfire, in front of a bonfire. Just please do remember to never leave an open flame unattended. And even if it's cold, don't get too close to the bonfire. We are witches, not moths, okay? So, the bonfire will be also extremely helpful in burning offerings, in giving offerings to burning them in a bonfire towards the gods, towards your ancestors, and so on, and so on. And, as always, if you want to celebrate with your covenant, even if you don't want to burn anything, just be careful if you decide to do so. Now, for my brothers and sisters with, a, with an her hermetic approach, this is an amazing time to start working with Goethic powers for deep analysis of ourselves and our mind. Of course, uh, as always, you can work with Goethic powers without using a Goethic system. I get, I get told this a lot. How can I use the Goetia for... You can use easily, you can work easily with any Goetic powers if you are a woman or, or if you do not respect any single passage. We will discuss them in the future, but it's an amazing time to work with Goetic powers. Just use the Goetia as a reference, as a list of attributes of these powers. Then, for my pagan brothers and sisters, this is a great time to work with, your, with, with the dark feminine, with your darker receptive part. So, diving in yourself to solve problems within yourself. For Christian brothers and sisters, you may want to take a look at the behavior of Jesus in this world. So, you may want to see your darker side as the hesitation of Jesus before the cross, then accepting the cross as a deep chain, if you want, as a symbol of resurrection, so deep analysis and evolution, resurrection in this case, even better. For brothers and sisters of the silver iris, this is a time to develop your ability to work with darker powers, so uh, you need to work with deep introspection, extreme mind control and analysis of your darker sides. Also, you want to work with your ancestors if you are able to. We are always able to, almost always able to. And if you want to work with pagan deities that are not the great gods of the north, you may want to remember that you can work with Persephone for the descent into darkness or start working with Baba Yaga for the exploration of darkness. For brothers and sisters of the Crimson Cloak, as we know, longer nights are already here you have your dark blessing already at his apex. But also remember, while you are experiencing these extreme dark blessing, that this is also the festivity of the last harvest. So you want to continue harvest, harvesting for your silver moon while also solving your inner problems. Please do remember 
with great powers comes great possibilities. But please keep yourself grounded and try to be as much as you can in balance. For brothers and sisters of the path of the dreamer, in this time, remember that inner war is more important than astral travel. So try to dedicate at least some of your time, some of your studies through and toward inner war. Then if you want to practice astral travel in this period, we want to work in darker, we want to start working in darker realms and even with the dark triad of the rules. Just please be careful when you explore the darker rules. Always remember to ground yourself while working with those powers. Now, uh, exemplifying, try, trying to give you the image of this festivity, what we want to do in our magical practice with this festivity, we want to proceed with a deep inner war. So, we want to figuratively be able to look at ourselves in the mirror and we want to be able to look while looking ourselves in the eyes quoting the words of the master writers of I prevail we want to be able to look at ourselves in the mirror and say to ourselves if you don't know the devil then you don't know me. Now, if you want to get deeper into the rabbit hole, I will wait for you on the video coming up tomorrow, the advanced one. And as always, I deeply thank you for your kind attention and may eternal light shine.